Understanding the cycle time, lead time and the talk time is the first step for project managers and lean practitioners to move one step closer to improve the efficiency of their operations. People often get confused between these three terms. And as a lean manager, you should consider all three metrics as a key performance indicator for your workflow. And in this video, we're going to look at the difference between these three through some examples. So please watch this video till the end. Forget to like, comment and share with all your friends as well. And in case if you are visiting my channel for the first time, don't forget to subscribe as well and to hit that bell icon as well for all the notifications from digital e-learning on my upcoming next videos. Talk time. So talk time, the term comes from German word, which means pulse. Just as your heart rate can speed up or slow down, your company talk time can be high or low compared to the customer demand. Talk time is the rate at which you need to complete a product in order to meet a customer demand. It was first used as a metric in 1930s in Germany for airplane manufacturing. 20 years later, it contributed significantly to the rise of Toyota from a small Japanese car maker to largest automobile company in the world. For example, if you receive a new, new product order every 4 hours, to meet this demand, your team need to finish their product in less than 4 hours, otherwise you will miss this target. So how do you calculate talk time? The talk time is calculated by dividing the customer demand rate per day in units to the available working time you have per day in seconds. The formula for calculating talk time is the available time by customer request. The available time is the amount of time that is available to you in which you can work. This excludes break time and any expected stoppage time, for example schedule maintenance or team briefing. So let us see one example of calculating the tech time. Here we have a situation like the customer demand is of 400 units per day and we need to calculate the tech time. So we have total working hours as 8 which is equivalent to 480 minutes. We subtract the lunch break of 30 minutes. We also subtract 2 tea breaks of 15 each again 30 minutes and 20 minutes of setup and changeover time. The net available working hours that we have is if you subtract all this from 480 you get 400. Right? Now tech time formula is net available time divided by number of customer demand. That is 400 minutes divided by 400 units. So we are getting tech time as 1 unit per minute. But in real case you, need to, you should target for achieving uh, 50 seconds for each unit in order to meet this demand because this is the maximum time that you should take otherwise you will miss this customer demand. So next what we have is the cycle time. Cycle time describes how long it going to take to complete a specific task from start to finish. Cycle time starts from a time when manufacturing is initiated to the time when manufacturing is completed. Cycle time can be measured with a stopwatch. As the name suggests, cycle time is a time taken to produce one unit from start to end. And cycle time gives you idea of how much time it will take to complete the demand according to the current rate. Cycle time does not take into the consideration any other time than this. So how do you calculate cycle time? The calculation of cycle time is a continuous process. There is a large number of products or services being processed at a given moment. Therefore, the formula has been reworked. So the cycle time is basically the average time between the completion of units. Now let us see how do we calculate cycle time. So the example here is that we have 50 working hours in a week and we are producing around 100 units per day and we need to calculate the cycle time. So the formula for calculating cycle time is that the total working hours per week is 50. Total units that we have to produce is 100. So the cycle time is 
50 hours divided by 100 units that is every 0.5 hours we need to produce one unit in order to meet this demand people often get confused between cycle time and attack time cycle time and attack time are not synonym they are different and this difference needs to be clearly understood cycle time is how often a part is completed by a particular process and attack time is the customer demand calculations that tells you how often a part should be completed by a particular process in order to meet a demand in the perfect world attack time should match cycle time but this is not practically possible and if it is it gets a lot of headache if cycle time is more than attack time it means that you are not producing fast enough to complete the customer demand which will eventually result in loss of sales poor satisfaction rate and company's performance if cycle time is less than attack time it means that company is overproducing and process could be over designed and over staffed which is also a waste of resource for over design it could be the too much money and effort have been spent on the process over staff could be you could have too many employees in the process over production producing more than what is needed by the customer right now leading to excess inventory which is also one of the eight waste of lane however with quality issues reject scrap machine breakdown and absent employees are always face challenge factors that we face in manufacturing that is why we always take the cycle time less than tech time lead time so lead time has totally different use as compared to the track time and the cycle time lead time consists of entire journey of from one unit from scratch to end in simple words lead time is the total time taken from a unit from getting an order to receiving payment so lead time is not only about the production it is about the entire process of your organization now let us see how do we calculate the lead time here so let us assume that the client gives order on 1st of jan you receive order on 2nd jan and start manufacturing on 2nd jan right the entire time to manufacture takes another 10 days so that is 12th of jan delivery will take another 5 days so it is 17th of jan and client takes another 3 days to make the payment so it is 20th of jan so your lead time is 20 days in this case Let us look at quick the benefits of our tag time, cycle time, and lead time. We we'll start with the lead time first. So for the lead time, the first benefit that we have is the flexibility during rapid shift in the market. Outspace your competition. Quick replenishment of stocks, and for the cycle time, helps in determining the time of delivery. Better positioning of products in the market. Better. distribution of product in the supply chain for the tag time minimize the overtime set realistic time targets production rate streamlined constant production flow and reduce error and increase quality of work let us do a quick recap of what we have learned today difference between the tag time cycle time and the lead time So the tag time, the nutshell, is the time that equals the time between starting to work on one unit and starting the next one. Lead time equals the total time it takes from receiving an order to delivering an item. Right. Next, what we have is the cycle time. Cycle time. it was the average time it takes to finish one unit so that is the difference between the tag time cycle time and lead time so that is all i have on this video on difference between the tag time cycle time and lead time i hope you are now have a good understanding on these two three terms thanks for watching this till e learning have a fantastic day ahead